Hello, I'm Stefan Kriber, Project Kid for Lexd, and this is the second video now in the series around Lexd devices. This one gonna be looking at actually a few of the device types all in one shot, uh, and that's gonna be all of the Unix device types. So those are used to pass in Unix character devices or block devices to containers. They can't work with virtual machines, they only work with containers. Um, and yeah, they only support some, some specific devices in some specific cases. So I'm going to be going through, through those. The, effectively, we have three of those um, present in Lexd. The first one is called Unix char, so Unix, uh, for Unix character device. The second one is Unix block for Unix block devices. And we've got a third one, which is called Unix hot plug, um, which is technically a bit of a hybrid between both, but is uh, related to USB devices and trying to automatically detect which device, um, which character or block devices need to be passed into a container. Now, as for why you would even want to do this, uh, most people, for most people, the answer is you don't, um, but it can be useful for a few specific things. Unix character devices specifically are quite useful uh, for containers. Uh, examples include passing in, for example, slash dev slash kvm on the host, which will then allow the container to run virtual machines. It can also be used to pass in a variety of external devices. So it could be like from scientific equipment, like uh, scales or a variety of sensors or uh, things like serial devices. So whether that's to talk to uh, network equipment or any other device that just uses a uses a good old fashioned serial port. Uh, it can also be used for, and that's what I actually do myself for a variety of things like modems for like IoT devices and the like. So those also do tend to show up as usually serial devices, like serial console type devices uh, and exposed to, to Linux that way. Uh, it can also be used to pass in uh, things like uh, mouse, uh, some specific or uh, some kind of um, identification devices like UB keys and those kind of devices. Uh, what is it like joysticks, keyboards? Some of all of those human interface devices can also be passed through using using those. Um, now, whether it makes sense for a container or not, it really kind of depends on what you're doing. Uh, usually you usually don't find passing in keyboard or mice to be particularly useful, but some people do run like a full. Um, X server or Wayland server inside of a container, at which point this might be needed. Um, Unix child devices can also be used to pass in GPU device nodes in theory, but we actually do have a dedicated GPU device type for that, which does a far better job. Now, as far as what you can do, uh, you can effectively set what the major and minor numbers are. So that's the main identifiers. But you only really need to set those uh, if the device doesn't already exist on the host. If it does, it's much easier to just set the source path instead. Uh, so this option source, and it will just cause LexD to look up the existing device and then replicate that in the container. Uh, you can use the required flag and set it to false to allow the container to be started even if the device is missing. So that can be useful in some scenarios. Um, the ownership and device and modes can also be set uh, through config keys. So that's that's most of it for Unix char devices. Uh, block is a lot of the same. The options are effectively identical, uh, but this time it's dealing with block devices instead. Now the use cases for block devices are even fewer than character devices in general, uh, because that's I mean block devices in general are effectively just storage, so uh, disks and partitions. There are some weird cases where um, other devices, things like video encoder and decoders might be using a block device because they're access, they're access through the NVMe bus instead of some other more um, appropriate mechanism. But those are also very rare. Um, for disks and partitions in general, we don't want to expose those to containers because it's incredibly dangerous. Uh, the container would then be allowed to directly modify that block device or partition, um, potentially writing data that could cause kernel crashes. There are a few ways to make this safe, and I'll show one of those afterwards in the demo, um, but it's pretty rare that you need this. Um, one of the kind of edge cases where it is needed is if you do image building inside of containers and you need access to things like loop devices. 
um, then that's a legitimate use case for using that, but it's, yeah, it's reasonably rare. And the third type is actually quite a bit newer than the other two, and it's called Unix Hotplug. So what that one does is it's a bit of a cross between a USB device type and Unix um, character device and plug device uh, types. What it does is that you set the vendor ID and product ID keys uh, to match those of a USB device. And when that gets plugged into the host system, all devices that would show up on the host as part of that device being plugged in will then automatically be passed into the, um, into the container. So that can be pretty useful, especially for things like uh, UB keys and other similar uh, USB devices that might be plugged in later on, uh, or that might show up with a number of devices, then all of those will automatically be passed to the container. Now, whether you can use all of those devices in the container, that's a different matter, uh, but I found this one to work particularly well for things like yeah, passing in authentication devices like UB keys or uh, Google Titan login keys and those kind of things. All right, so that's a bit of an overview for um, the three types of Unix devices that LXD supports. And now we can just try and play with them a bit. So moving over here, I just have an empty project and we'll just start off by spawning an Ubuntu container. All right. And you can, and the other thing to, that's worth mentioning is that uh, all of the Unix devices can be done at, at runtime, so no need to restart anything, so that's pretty convenient. Uh, in this case, we're just going to be start, uh, starting off by passing a, the KVM device, so that's a Unix char device. And as mentioned, in this case, the easiest is actually to do uh, the source path. I'm going to check something else. It might be that we actually support passing just the path and assuming it's the source as well, which makes the syntax even more compact. And indeed we do. Okay, so if we go in there and I look, we're gonna have devkvm present in the container, which would then allow it uh, to now start running virtual machines if I was to install either a nested LXD or install libvirt, qmu or something like that in there. Um, I don't believe I've got any uh, serial device on this particular machine, so I can't show that. Um, but what I should be able to show is the YubiKey behavior, and we're going to be using that to show Unix hotplug. Um, so if we, I look at my USB bus, I should see a YubiKey here. And now uh, let's try to add that. So device and to U1, call it YubiKey. Oops, YubiKey. Um, device is Unix hotplug, and vendor ID is 1050. Product ID is 0406. Okay, out of the box, I don't really expect anything exciting. So if we look at the um, the tree of, um, of devices that we have, just gonna sort that. There's currently nothing really new there. We do have the div KVM we, we passed earlier, but that's it. Now what I'm gonna be doing is actually unplugging the YubiKey from my machine and plugging it back. Okay, so that's been done. And if we refresh, we can see a few things have showed up. So there's a couple of uh, child devices have showed up. A USB device here has been added. Uh, HID RAW, so human interface device, has also been added. Now, I don't have the YubiKey tools installed in there, but if I did, I could now actually access that YubiKey just fine. And if I go and unplug it, those device nodes also vanish. I'm just gonna plug it back, there we go. So that's for uh, Unix Hotplug. Uh, again, there's some, some tweaks you can do to set uh, specific ownership and permissions on those kind of device nodes, but that's kind of the basic of it. And then for block, that one's always a bit harder to show. Uh, so let me just get started with that. So we're gonna be creating a block device, 10 gigs large, let's call it loop.img. Okay. So I've got a file called loop.img now that's 10 gigs large, and I'm gonna be, um, setting up a loop device for it. So it'll set up, find for that file. Okay, all right. And now if I look at my loop devices for loop.img, there we go. Okay, so now I've got a device node on my system called dev loop one, which is a block device that matches uh, this particular file on disk that I just created. So now if we pass it to the container as Unix block, with the source path 
uh, doing the loop one. And in this case, uh, we're going to be passing it as a different thing in the container. So make it show up as dev as here in there. Uh, I forgot to give it a name. So let me just do that and just call it loop. Okay. All right. So now if I go in the container, I do have oops, dev SDA and I can actually go ahead and format it. So in this case, I set up ext4 on it. Now what I can't do in a container is mount it. And that's why by default block devices are not particularly useful unless you run um, a privileged container with more security features disabled to then allow it to be mounted. Uh, and that's usually a very bad idea because that might lead to a user of that container attacking the entire system and causing kernel crashes and the like. But uh, LexD does have the ability to map um, those kind of mounts that would be denied instead of a privileged container to instead use uh, a fuse implementation of the file system, making that perfectly safe. So to do this, what we need to do is actually install a piece of software called Fuse2FS. That's a effectively a fuse implementation of ext2, 3, and 4. And with that installed now, what we can do is stop the container and then set some config keys on it. So security syscalls intercept mount, we need to enable that. And then security syscalls intercept mount that fuse and then tell it that if it sees, I'm trying to remember the syntax, I'm not 100% sure of it, but if it sees ext4, then point that to fuse to fs. I think it's something else. Let's see if that worked. So then we start the container back, go in there, make sure we still have our dev SDA, which we do, and then mount it on slash mnt, and now it succeeded. And if we go look at the output, you can see 10 gigs slash mnt, look at the result, everything looks perfectly normal. There is one catch, if we look at the process list now, we'll see that there's a process running here called fuse2fs that shows that dev sda is mounted on slash mnt. So we're not using the actual kernel implementation of uh, ext4 at all, we're using a user space implementation of it through fuse with lexd redirecting those mount requests to that program. Doing that avoids um, all of the security concerns I mentioned earlier with uh, being able to mount those bug devices. All right, so that's all three types um, showed here. The one additional one I will I will show quickly is actually on my home cluster. I do have a container that I use to run IoT uh, type processes, and that's actually running Docker inside of a LXT container. Uh, if we look at the config for it, we'll see some more examples of those devices. As mentioned, a lot of IoT devices tend to use um, either plain USB, um, deep USB type devices. That's what we can see here with my software defined radio, or they will use effectively serial type device uh, to contact their modem. And that's what I've got for both Zigbee and Z-Wave here where their respective modems are effectively under slash dev slash serial. One thing that's worth keeping in mind here is that what I'm doing here is probably the safest way to do it, uh, which is using slash dev slash serial slash by ID to select the device in a way that is going to be constant. You don't want to rely on using slash dev slash TTY USB 01 or something like that on the host because you've got no guarantee that after a reboot, the same uh, the, the same name will be used. Whereas if you use something like by ID, by a UID or something like that, which is stable, then there's no issue about like what order the device is detected in on a boot time. And to make it easier inside the container, I always expose it with the same name. So in this case, I've got dev serial Z-Wave modems, dev serial Zigbee modem. And so the software running inside of the container uh, doesn't need to play any guesses as far as the names, it can just always use the same path. All right. So that's it for the overview of Unix devices in next day. Um, as mentioned, we've got some kind of extra types that uh, technically you make use of Unix uh, character devices or block devices behind, uh, behind the scenes when you use them. 
That's technically true of um, US, USB devices, show up as dev bus USB, and so use fictively character devices. But Lexty uh, has special handling to actually understand the USB bus and what needs to be passed in. GPUs are the same deal, where GPUs often are a combination of multiple devices in slash dev as well. And similarly, LexD tracks down which ones relate to the GPU you want to pass and then pass those through. Uh, the same is also true of InfiniBand to an extent, which is a combination of both a network device, so an IB type device for InfiniBand of a uh, um, IP over InfiniBand, um, or uh, as well as the device nodes that are used to do uh, direct memory mapping, so remote direct memory, direct memory, um, direct memory access, especially uh, on InfiniBand. So those are like slash dev slash u verbs, i verbs, and some of the other devices that show up in there. And um, TPM also uses character devices in the container case, where we effectively run a process on the host system that simulates a trusted platform module, and that results in Unix character devices being injected into the container. So it's it's something that's used kind of behind the scenes in a variety of places within LexD and is and can also be used directly uh, by users who know what they're doing or need to, to pass through a specific device. Anyway, hopefully this was a pretty useful overview of the uh, Unix character block and hot block devices in LexD. If you've got any questions about any of those, uh, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section or on our community forum. And I'll have uh, those documentation pages linked for you down in the description. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.